Amen. I have the privilege of uh, speaking about the sixth driver. We are fellowship. And uh, the first thing that we got to settle is that God is in complete control. And what I mean by that, the omnipotent one has brought us together. In other words, I believe nothing happens by accident or chance. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose where you'd be born. You didn't choose what time in history you'd be alive. God did that. And the same thing in the kingdom of God, we got to come to grips. Where did God plant us? And be secure with that. That God saved us or wooed you here to be a part of this fellowship. Amen. Because if you can't settle that, you won't be able to participate with a clear heart what this fellowship is about. Matter of fact, in the drivers, we are a fellowship. We got to really grab how God called us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.26, the New Living says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, few of you were wise in this world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. But he goes on and says, God choose the foolish things of this world. As uh, Pastor Willie elaborated today, most of us, all of us, pretty much in Praise Chapel, didn't, weren't the cream of the crop of society. I have a vision, if I ever painted a picture, it'd be the highway to hell. And on the highway to hell, there's all these exits. There's the Baptist church, there's the Word of Faith church, there's Calvary Chapel, and in the very last exit, right before hell, big light, last stop, Praise Chapel for all those knuckleheads that didn't get off sooner. <laughs> But we, we got to come to grips where Jesus said in John 15, 16, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. That, that's the reality. God brought us together. I, I mean, I'm a radical about this. Even us being here today is not an accident. We got to forget about who didn't come and be thankful for who is here. God brought us together. And he also planted you. Whether you got a track or you were backslidden or you had some horrible experience somewhere else and you're in that local praise chapel, God put you there. Can you say amen? And, you know, so when it comes to our fellowship, God placed us somewhere. We must be like-minded. Now, the scripture I really want to go through, and this is Philippians chapter 2, Paul says this in verse number one, therefore, if there be any consolation of Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection of mercy, fulfill my joy being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in the lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not out only for his own interest, but the interest of others. I think this is really a phenomenal word that Paul's given to the Philippian church about what true fellowship is. He says, if there's any true fellowship of the Spirit, he kind of gives us some direction here. You got to be like minded men. I mean, that's what discipleship is, and that's what we're talking about here, like-mindedness. We have a vision. We have a purpose. We know what we call it, win, build, send. That's what's brought us here right now. It's this like-mindedness. That's what fellowship is. Yeah, we have a sovereignty here that God's called us, and we're able to express the different giftings each one of us as individuals and church has. But let's don't forget this. You're part of a family. This is a family of fellowships, and we're connected with that. Let me, let me tell you a personal thing that happened to me. My wife and I got sent to Kansas City against our will in 1993. <laughs> and that ain't no lie. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to go there. I, I, did, I planned to go to Chicago for six years. I prayed, fasted, and that's what I wanted to do. And on a Sunday night, Pastor Mike, my pastor, Neville, he came to me and said, you're going to go to uh, Kansas City, and you're leaving Tuesday. <laughs> and, well, you know what? I look back. I see God's hand on that. But from 93, right around 98, we didn't have much of a breakthrough. I mean, we had God doing some things. 
But in 1998, I really felt the Lord speak to me about our fellowship. And, and I'm going to tell you three things about dealing with fellowship and our fellowship that I can see where the Kansas City Fellowship got their big breakthrough. God spoke to me about three things. He said, my pastor must succeed, my mother church must succeed, and my fellowship must succeed. And, and this is personally, but I can really show where things really begin to flow when I took this posture. What I mean is my pastor must succeed. This is the process of discipleship that makes our fellowship. In other words, I have a pastor. My pastor may be 1,600 miles away. My pastor's Donna Neville. But that's not just a title, Donna Neville. She's my pastor. But the reality is she's only my pastor as much as I reveal myself to her. Accountability is an overrated word. you got to reveal yourself to that pastor. And because of that, let me tell you this, because of that, uh, 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 I can't preach to my church what I don't live. I can't tell them in this wonderful fellowship of wind, build, sin, I can't preach to them about submission, accountability, and speaking in life if someone can't speak into my life. And it's important that my pastor succeed, that nothing happens there. Do everything in my power because it's part of this wonderful story of our fellowship. The second thing is, my mother church must succeed. It, I didn't I, I didn't went, I was sent. I came from somewhere. They laid hands on me. They, they put the call of God on me so I, I can tell my church and the disciples and the churches we plant, we didn't just run away from home. Hello, we were sent with a blessing. And, and what do I mean by that? It's this wonderful story that I came from somewhere and it gives vision that the fellowship didn't keep me in, but it released me to make our fellowship bigger. And we should honor that. And I thank God that my mother church, I could do anything I can for it to help it succeed. Do anything I can to keep it better. Let me, let me say this. We're part of a fellowship and you have a church out and, uh, or you're going to go out one day. Let me tell you, don't forget where you came from. I said, don't forget where you came from. Nothing's greater than you can bring back your disciples and say, this was our mother church. And we have a bunch of mother churches, but we got to honor that. The third thing is this. My fellowship must succeed. And this is what God put on my heart. I'm a part of something big. Whether you have a nice building or you're in a storefront or you're still in your house, what brings us dignity is that we're a fellowship, that we're not just one little old church meeting in a house or a storefront, but I'm part of something worldwide. I am part of something that's shaking the world from Iraq to the Philippines, from the East Coast to the West Coast. I am part of something large and big. Come on, someone give the Lord praise. Because of that, I must do anything in my power and not make it just about me, not make it just about my ministry, but I must honor my fellowship and help it, whether now we're a family of fellowships, but those aren't, you know, gangs, <laughs> all right? Next thing you know, people are going to be wearing, you know, bandanas of colors. Where are you from? La Puente. <laughs> no. No. But we're part of a big family. Hello. We're part of a big family, and I must do whatever I can to help my fellowship. Because without that, this is where God called me. I would not be here. The people that are getting saved in the Midwest wouldn't be there. The people in your city wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the fellowship that God blessed us. So we must do everything we can. Serve, pastor, I'm talking to pastor. Serve the pastor that sent you out. Don't forget them. Okay? It's, I can't stand it when pastors order all their disciples around, but they rebel against the pastor who sent them out. I think that's hypocrisy. Don't forget your mother church. Help them because you bring dignity. You are the heroes of them for the future disciples. You go out and you succeed in any fruit in your ministry. That inspires that mother church to do what it does. And when you send out churches and your fellowship begins to develop, they see that honor. You reap what you sow. Can you say amen? And then the third again is serve this fellowship. If you see somebody that's struggling or in a challenge, whatever it may be, go out of your way to help them. And just because they're not part of you or they're different. Respect each other's churches. Respect, treat others how you want to be treated. Hello. But these three things make fellowship. Now, let me tell you something. There's a lot of books out there, movements and, and, and so forth happening, and they're promoted so well today. On the, uh, on the internet, and, and I'm not against it. We can glean from anything, but there's almost this sense that guys I see can almost seem like what 
other people are doing can be better than what we are. That they can seem superior than Praise Chapel because Praise Chapel's just got a bunch of knuckleheads. Let, let me tell you something. Don't be ashamed where God has placed you in the body of Christ. Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship. Don't be ashamed that God didn't make a mistake. You know, <laughs> well, never mind. I got to stay focused. <laughs> Fellowship begins at the heart, 1 Corinthians 1.10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united, through, uh, uh, united in thought and purpose. This has to grab our hearts. I'm not competing with the church down the street. I'm not competing with another fellowship. You are my brothers. Hello. We are in this together. Can you say amen? As a matter of fact, I'm going to be honest. I'm not competing with Victory Outreach. I'm not competing with another fellowship or another denomination. Ultimately, we're part of the body of Christ. Fellowship is our partnership. As a matter of fact, Philippians chapter 2. Let me read the same verse in the message. Then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough and lend a helping hand. My God, if all of us did that, our fellowship would explode. Our churches would explode. To esteem somebody greater than yourself, to help another church more than just your church, and you may have your struggles, this thing would explode what God's given us. Come on, give him a big hand clap. To be a part of Praise Chapel or the kingdom of God is serving one another. Now, let, let me just bring this down real quick. It costs, though, to have fellowship. Because later on in that chapter, Paul says this, in verses 19 through 21, but I trust in the Lord to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own and not the things which are Christ Jesus. Matter of fact, the New Living says all others only care for themselves and not what matters to Jesus Christ. If we, our churches, and we teach this to our disciples just to think about ourselves, we'll fall apart. We won't carry this thing on to next generations. What a tragedy. I want you, do you know Paul's in jail when he said this? He's in jail in not L.A. County with cable TV. He's in a dungeon. And Timothy's right there caring for him. It's his best guy. He's caring for his personal needs, and he sees the need for the kingdom, and he gives up his own comfort to help a hand, to help out. He sacrifices his best. It's no different than us pastors sending out our best disciples for the kingdom of God to build this fellowship bigger. Can you say Amen. Not hoarding them for ourselves, but sending them out. Giving up our best to build this fellowship. Because someone gave you a chance, you ought to give someone else a chance to build this fellowship. Can you say amen? Like-minded men are not those who cling to each other. Listen to me. It, it, it really comes down to this. Fellowship is either, it's not, it's either seeking for yourself or doing what Christ wants you to do. Christ wants us to go into all the world and he's expressed that for us through fellowship. I'm so honored and blessed that God brought us together at Praise Chapel. Respect each other. Honor each other. I'm not just talking about disciples, I'm talking about pastors. Don't burn each other. This ain't, that, that city's not your old gang. We're in the kingdom of God. Trust me, there's sinners being born every day. There's enough of us to reach. Amen? God bless you.